Well, the next step in my hammock is I have got these pullouts here. They're going to be on either side there and then that'll hold the bug net out. And my pullouts, the tie-outs here, are going to be 41 inches from the end. That's D. 41 inches from the end. So I'm going to just take the end of my hammock. I'm going to measure in 41 inches and I am going to mark it and then we're going to put our little tie outs there. So I folded my hammock in half and I marked 41 inches from the end and I've marked now with these clips 41 inches down. So these four clips are all where my tie outs are going to go. And I'm going to put the tie out just below the zipper on the bottom and just inside the zipper I'm going to put another little tab for attaching things just in case he wants to attach something on the inside. This is the hardware that I'm going to use for my tie outs. I've got these half inch beastie D's which are quite strong compared to a regular D ring and then I have some of these little D rings. I'm going to use this roll of half inch grosgrain ribbon which fits through for the tie out. And I'm also going to use it on the inside of the hammock for the little attachment points. The body of the tie out is also going to be made from this 7 8 inch grosgrain ribbon. So I'll use these, but I'm going to clad them in some of my scrap orange fabric so that you don't have this big block of black on the outside of the hammock. And then I'm going to take my Beastie D on another piece of webbing and sew it like that. That way I have a nice strong attachment point. So I have four tie outs that go on the outside of the hammock so I'm going to want four pieces and I'm going to cut each one so that it's two inches long. I have a scrap piece here of the orange hammock body fabric. I'm going to clad this with this other fabric. Just trim that down a little bit. I'm going to sew this at the sewing machine so that I have a seam that goes all the way around and then I'm going to do kind of an envelope corner here at the ends to hold those down so that all of the edges are going to be finished. And then that'll be the outside and then my other piece of webbing, the small piece of webbing will be sewn to that. I'm threading my machine so that I have orange thread in the needle and in the bobbin. I'll want this stitching to be quite invisible from the outside. So I'm going to just line this up so that it's at the center of the little tab here. I don't want to start or finish my seam at the end and then have like a weird corner. So we're going to do it in the middle. And then I'm going to hold on to my top thread here so that when I lock my stitch I'm not getting bunching up underneath the fabric inside the bobbin case. So I'm just going to lock my stitch. Okay, now I'm going to sew, but I, before I get to the end of the seam here, let me just trim this back a hair. I want to fold this down. And I'll fold this over and down so that I get an envelope. Let me put that flap under the foot to get that out of the way. So you see what I've got going on here. I'm going to pinch these two together and then fold these flaps inward. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be concealed, but what we want is a nice finished edge on the outside. We don't want these weird bits of fabric poking out. So I'm just going to keep my needle in, but I'm going to lift my foot and now I'm going to spin it. And we'll sew this way. I'll just check the 
fabric all along here to make sure there's no funky things happening, no creases. And I'm also going to trim back these threads now so that I don't actually sew those into the project and make a mess. Alright, I'm at the end so I'm going to flip it back this way. And when I get to the halfway point, I'll address the folds on the other end. Okay, let me trim this back of here. It doesn't need to be quite that long. I found that when you're doing this kind of small precision work, it's a lot easier just to have the machine hold the thing in place so that you don't feel like you need three sets of hands instead of trying to pin it all in advance. We'll just take the corners here, fold them in, and then fold them back. Just like that. Now I'll just keep that in place with my finger until I get down to this corner. Then I'll lift my foot, put my needles down. I'll spin it around, and then I'm going to flatten everything by setting my foot on it. Come back down to this corner. And now I'll just sew up to where I started, and I'll lock my stitch again. Lift that needle up. Trim these back. And that makes a nice little tab that I can then attach my grow grain to. So I have my four little tabs sewn here, and I have my grow grain. I'm just going to cut a piece. I'll have to trim it back, but I'm going to put my BCD through the grow grain, and then I am going to attach it to my little tab like that so that there's not a lot of extra play there. And then on the back side, I'm just going to stitch that in place. So I'm going to do that for each one, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to trim these ends after I get everything sewn in. And by spreading this out a little bit, I'll be widening the area where I have pressure or tension on the hammock. I think that'll make it a little bit stronger. So I have my little tabs here ready to sew. I think I'm going to sew them so that I can see what I'm doing here a little bit better by looking down on the back side. Lock it. And I'm just going to follow the, I don't need these pins anymore. And I'm going to trim this so that I don't end up sewing these threads down, making an ugly mess somewhere. I'm just going to follow the path of this row green. I don't want to sew it too close to that edge because remember, I got to trim those. I'm going to sew across. And I'll sew up. Now I think I'm going to do some excess. I'm just going to cross this over. So up again. Cross down. So up again. Now lock that off. This kind of looks like a little oil well. See, that's what it looks like from the back. And now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim inside the orange so that this is what my tab looks like. And I'll do this for every one. I'll do this for the others. The little pull-out tabs here are all sewn, and I've trimmed off the little legs of those oil derricks. For the D-rings that'll go on the inside, I've got a six-inch piece of this grow green that I'm going to put through my webbing. But I want it to be long so that I can fold it over 
and have it on the inside of the hammock so it'll line up with that. But I don't want to hit this with my sewing machine foot. So I want it to kind of be like that. And that way when I'm sewing this to the outside, I'll be also sewing this one to the inside. And then I'll have little attachment points on the inside of the hammock as well as the outside of the hammock. And then this will provide extra reinforcement and strength for those tabs. So before I get started on that, I am going to tack down these little loops so that they don't get lost on me any. I'm just going to take a pin for the time being and then I'm going to just run a little tack right through there just to kind of hold that in place so that I don't have it sliding around. My little tabs are tacked down now and sewed. So now we're going to assemble this where they go on the hammock. I want to make sure I don't have any fabric hanging out down here acting weird. And then I'm just going to take my seam. This is the zipper. I'm going to line this up right with the base of the zipper so that it's centered right on that clip. I'm going to put a pin in it. Hold it in place. That's held in place and that'll go there. And then on the inside, my little strap here that I made, I want to make sure I have the raw edge of the webbing side down. It's going to go right along the base of the zipper right in there. And so that should be right behind there. I want it so that I'm not going to, as I'm sewing through here at the edge, I'm not going to be hitting this D-ring with my foot. So that's why I gave myself a little bit of slack there. I'm going to put a few more pins in from this side, see if I can now go through all these layers with my pins. Yeah, no problem. This is going to be a pretty thick thing. My sewing machine is going to have to go through one, two, three, four layers of the grow grain plus the hammock, but I think it'll be pretty strong. And then as this has tension pulled against it, I don't think I'll have any problems because the, the weight is going to be shared by here and by here. We have the tab now right at the proper spot. I'll take this clip off. I don't need this clip anymore. And I'm going to sew a straight seam along the top. And I'm holding this top thread so that I don't get bunching or nesting underneath. I lock my stitch. Make sure I don't have anything funky happening under there. When I get to the end, I'm going to lift my foot, put my needles down, and you swing everything around, and then I'm smoothing it out so I don't have any puckered fabric underneath. And I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to just trim these threads because I don't need those in the way. And I'm just going to remove that pin and just sew a straight line right down the edge. When I get to the end, I'm going to keep my needle down and lift my foot. Now I'm swinging everything around. And just put your hand under here and make sure you don't have any puckering fabric or anything folded under. Now I'm going to make this straight seam this way. And I'm just going slow here. I'm not going fast. I'm going to remove this pin. I don't need that pin anymore. When I get to the end here, I'm going to lift my foot, put my needles down, and swing it around this way. Make sure that D ring is folded out of the way underneath here because you don't want to sew on top of that and break a needle. And we'll just sew straight up. Now, when I get to the top, I'm going to do an X of reinforcement stitches and those are going to go through all the layers. So I'm going to keep my needle down and lift my foot, 
swing everything around and then I'm going across the diagonal to this corner of this little tab. And then when I get to that corner, I'm going to bring my thread up to the top so that I can do the next corner. And my needles down so I'm not losing my place in the fabric. Make sure everything's nice and flat back there. Now the last step will be to come up. Just come back up to the top and then we'll lock our stitches. And that should be nice and strong. Maybe stronger than the actual hammock. So here I have the tabs done. This is the front. Here we have it on the back. I have this nice little tab here to attach something like a glasses case or something like that. 